You're listening to the Annoyed Adult Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Annoyed Adult. I'm your host, Howard Cam, and along with Tina Hunt, we'll look at this world through the lens of a Gen Xer and a millennial. We're going to pick things apart and give a take on it. Some things may be uncomfortable for you to hear. But if we don't talk about it, who will? Who will? Who will talk about these things? We will. We have to. We have to. It's our moral obligation and responsibility. We're trying to be good Americans. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We have to do our very best. We do. Uh, today's topic is going to be questions and fond memories from Gen Xers. Yeah. And so we pulled these questions from Twitter and Reddit. Very and nice. so if you're listening and you hear your um, Twitter handle out or your, your Reddit handle, uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. For submitting that. So the first one is, it has an accurate, first is at, from at Corgi underscore zero. It says TFW, when you don't recognize any of the Grammy nominees, because you're stuck in the 1990s listening to grunge rock. Yeah. First, I had to under <laughs> I had to look up what TFW means. Same, dude. Same. I was like, what is a TFW? <laughs> yeah. Is it, so it's that face when. Yeah. How come they just can't spell that face when? Yeah, that it, that's really not that hard. I mean, you are on a keyboard. Yeah, just that face when, right? So yeah. it's that face when you don't recognize any of the Grammy nominees because you're stuck in the 90s listening to grunge rock. Did you listen to grunge rock? Yeah, yeah, Nirvana and all that. Oh, man, I was into Pro Jam. Oh, really? When their 10 album came out. Yeah. It was like mind-blowing for me. It was, it was changed. It changed me. Yeah. And I went, uh, my very first concert ever was seeing Pro Jam play at the University of Hawaii Manoa Andrews Amphitheater. Oh, nice. Yeah. What was that? It was in the 90s. Yeah. It was in the 90s. And I went with my friend Chris and we went to see the show. And it's the first time ever yeah. that I, I went to a concert. It was it was so awesome. Nice. And then after my ears rang for probably eight hours. <laughs> I didn't understand. I didn't understand. I think I brought a date too. To I, a grunge concert? I don't remember her name. Oh, uh, wow. Well. But I, I I had, <laughs> it wasn't a good date then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it was um, it was so awesome. Like I loved pro, I love Pro Jam. I still love Pro Jam. Yeah. And then when Yellow Lead Better came out, that song came out, and then they had these like um, bootleg albums. Now back in the '90s, like you had to go find these bootleg albums in obscure record stores. Mm -hmm. And what we would do is we would we would copy them to tape, and then we'd eventually burn them on the CD. Yeah. Oh, that was the best. Yeah. Or Tower Records. Do you remember Tower Records? Yeah, I remember Tower Records. In fact, one of my first jobs was also at Tower Records. No way. Yeah, I worked at the Tower Records at Kahala Mall. Oh, nice. And this was probably, God, mid-90s, I think. Yeah. And I was a, and guess what my job was? Cashier? No. What were you? Try again. I mean, what else could you be? <laughs> I, was, I was an undercover security guard. Fuck off, you. <laughs> yeah. I was, <laughs> I was an undercover security guard, and my job was basically to just walk around and, and, you know, see if people are going to steal stuff, stick stuff in their pockets. No shit. Yeah. Oh, I, my God. That was kind of a fun job because I, I got to carry handcuffs. Ooh. Yes, yeah, so like you would stop them outside and go, hey, uh, Tower Record Security. <laughs> can, can you give me your hands? <laughs> I kind of need your hands. Can you, can you just put it there? <laughs> yeah, Tower Record Security. Uh, God, now that I think about it, I probably power tripped on that job. Really? Yeah. That is not a job for an early 20 year old yeah. to have because yeah. like do you want to give them handcuffs like am i really arresting someone from stealing a cd yeah or a tape like jesus christ so you took it seriously though i did and and if whoever i i, I i've ever arrested or detained <laughs> i'm sorry i'm sorry i really am i am sorry that that i've done that to you um you probably deserved better <laughs> I hope you're living a better life. <laughs> I, he's, there's probably people out there like, I remember this piece of shit arresting me for stealing a Hootie and the Blowfish CD. <laughs> Hootie and the Blowfish. <laughs> he stole Hootie and the Blowfish. Yeah. Excellent, dude. Yeah. But I'm, I, these Grammy nominees, look, going back to the Grammy nominees, yeah, like, yeah. I, I appreciate the music. I appreciate like whoever's, whoever's there. Um, I remember who who won the last Grammy. It's 2020. I don't pay attention at all. To was it? Oh God, John Baptiste. He was the um, the band leader on the the Tonight Show oh. with Stephen Colbert. Oh, the Late Show. Oh God, the Late Show. The Late he, Show. The Late Show with Stephen Colbert. 
And I listened to his album and it's, it's actually really good. And I can still appreciate today's music. This, like, this is not an indictment on all music is bad. Yeah. But I certainly appreciate good music. I certainly appreciate music that has a good message or a good beat. If that doesn't happen, then, you know, if it's just like a mismatch of everything, like mumble rap. <laughs> you don't like mumble rap. It's like, God, no, I don't really like it. I, I, I don't, I don't really like it. Um, what's the last song I listened to before I came here in the studio? Kendrick Lamar, DNA. Oh yeah. Love that song. Yeah. Love that song. There's a Meek Mill album somewhere in my in my iPhone. Yeah, that is that is on repeat. But on the on the opposite side of that, I listen to newer rock like Coheed and Cambria. Um, God, is that newer or am I just old? I wouldn't know because I don't know that band. Oh, see Co- now I feel like I'm getting older than you here. Yeah, and you're the millennial here. I know. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> no, but Coheed and Cambria like that is an awesome album. Um, good Apollo on Burning. Mm-hmm. That's a good album. Uh, I've listened to. The weekend, but to the be weekend honest, is good. Mm-hmm. But to be honest, his greatest hits, like his discography, discography. Yeah. But then I still go backwards and listen to like Beastie Boys. I listen to, uh, I have Little Dicky. <laughs> <laughs> little Dicky. I, I love. I love. I, oh, uh, Bruh by Little Dicky is a good song. It is because it has this fast hitting beat and it's just like a nonstop flow and it's really good. Yeah. All right. Anyway, um, yeah, I don't. Yeah, just because I don't recognize the, the Grammy nominees. I'll go look them up online. Well, so for me, I listen to the same music I I listened to in high school. Like when I was coming up here, I listened to Busta Rhymes. Yeah. Oh, God. Is he still alive? I hope so. Oh, no. Coolio died. Coolio is the one that died. Coolio died, man. Rest in peace. Yeah. That was that was a I, – I, I, all I remember from Coolio was his um, – Oh God! I don't know. What's the name of that song? Gangsters Paradise. Gangsters Paradise. Sir. No, but he. <laughs> Sir. <laughs> Sir. <laughs> no, there. What? Oh God! What? I remember um, that from what was that movie? Dangerous Minds or something with like Michelle. With Pfeiffer? Michelle Pfeiffer, where she's like sitting like uh, on the back of the chair with her leather jacket. I try to be a cool, teacher. Yeah. <laughs> Turn that chair around. Hey, what's up, kids? I'm here to educate you today. <laughs> Dude, you should show up to your classroom like that, just with a leather jacket one day, and play Gangster's Paradise. Just see, just see what they would do. Be the most cheesiest teacher. Like today, I'm gonna teach you. I'm gonna teach you life, street lessons, and poetry, and poetry. And the whole class can be like, "Oh God, this asshole! <laughs> what is wrong with you?" Uh, let's move on. From oh, are we done with Grammys? Let's go. Let's go to the next one. You want to read the next one? Yeah, this is from Not Lenny Bruce. Not Lenny Bruce. You get annoyed by boomers. Try having them as your parents. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I my I have boomer parents. You do? Mm-hmm. I do have boomer parents. And the problem with boomer parents is that they always ask you to do things that are sometimes not correct. Mm-hmm. Like they're like, "Hey, you see those uh you see those people down the street like what people, dad or mom?" <laughs> Not trying to indict my parents. <laughs> what people? You know, those people. W- what are those people? <laughs> <laughs> can you be more specific? Like, <laughs> Yeah, can you? It's like, why do, why do they have to put those ornaments on the lawn like that? Why can't they just move it around? I'm like, what are you talking about? Yeah. Like, wh- leave their ornaments alone. <laughs> or they, they complain about uh, the younger generation and then they say, you know what I mean? I'm like, no, I don't know what you mean. I'm literally, <laughs> I'm literally what you were complaining about. <laughs> yeah. So the, the thing is that I am now my father's age when he used to complain to me when I was a teenager. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Are you doing that to your kids now? The same thing? No, I don't. I only complain about uh, garbage people. Okay. Fair. Yeah. I only complain about um, garbage people. And, and to me, garbage people are the kind of people that don't contribute to society. Mm-hmm. But I think my the older boomer parents that I, I encounter are a little more racist. Yeah. They're they're like, <laughs> you know, racist. Like because they're brown or because they're, they're politely racist. <laughs> no. No. Have you ever been to Chinatown? Okay. I, I don't know. And maybe our listeners know, but like if you ever go to Chinatown, mm-hmm. the older Asian people that are pushing a wheeled cart 
where they put their vegetables and groceries inside, mm-hmm. they will purposefully aim for you and hit you because they are trying to establish their dominance and say that <laughs> you don't belong here in my town, right? I will cut your shins. <laughs> yeah. Like if you are white or you are not Chinese or not Asian, they'll look at you funny. Yeah. They'll look at you like, what are you doing here? Like we came here to get away from you. Yeah. Yeah. But that is like the boomer mentality now. Even like with technology, right? They're like, I don't understand this. I'm like, oh no, I totally get it. Yeah. Like help me fix it. I'm like, I I don't want to. (laughs) (laughs) Like I I know how to, I know how to fix computers. I know how to program. I know how to do these things. Like that's my job, my other job. And so, but I don't want to help people that are boomers fix it. Why? Because the minute you tell them that you know how to do something, mm-hmm. they'll expect you to do it all the time. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to help them fix their tech. Like this, I'll see something like, oh, I, I know how to, you know, program in JavaScript or whatever. And they're like, cool, come fix my printer. Yeah. No, I don't want to fix your printer. You fix your printer. Do you feel that they're lazy in a sense? You know, for the same generation that bitched a lot yeah. about making us do research on things, you do the research on things. Yeah. <laughs> Right? Like that's how Gen X grew up. Gen X grew up being forced to go to the library and look things up. Yeah. Because there are new technologies and our parents didn't know, so we had to teach ourselves. But now that our parents are older and now that they're boomers, they're like, you know, come help me. I'm like, no. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't you go to the library and look it up? <laughs> Pull up your bootstraps, damn it. <laughs> Fucking boomers. <laughs> <laughs> pull up your gut, pull up your bootstraps, get get your shit together, and go do it yourself. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> God, I, I do. I, I I have boomer parents, uh, and they're stuck in their ways. Like my dad, uh, my dad loves to put files on USB drives and like carry them around to different computers. Oh, why? Exactly. I'm like, Dad, just put everything on the cloud. It's secure. You can just move around and and go to any computer you want. Mm-hmm. Any computer you want and work on your file. Right. You don't have to take a flash drive and then wait. In fact, because, okay, this is some, some tech nerd shit. So USB ports have a, a finite speed that you can transfer data. Mm-hmm. The internet at his house is gigabit ethernet, and I tested it. It is faster to transfer data over the internet than would it be to plug in a flash drive and transfer those files into the flash drive. And then back out again. Yeah, it's just a clunky way to do things. I... Yeah, and what if he loses the flash drive? Yeah. He's old. Yeah. That's what happens. <laughs> yeah, boomer parents uh, are not bad parents, no. but they're, they're kind of inept. A little bit, yeah. Mm-hmm. How's, your, how's your relationship with, with your parents? You know... Um, Sorry to get deep on that, right? Like, n- no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about your Tell parents. me about your childhood, Christina. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I think the only thing that bothers me with my parents is that um, they think that everything works around their schedule. So yeah. they're just like, oh... So we're going to do this thing. And they tell you like an hour before and it's like, well, I, I was going to go do... And, and, and you know how... Uh, you know, my parents are immigrants. Okay. So... You know, if, we're, if I don't do it, the guilt comes on. I'm kind of, I, w- I was raised Catholic, so the Catholic guilt comes on. <laughs> like, oh, you're not going to come? Oh, yeah. Mm. You know, we only brought you to this country to start a new life for you, to make yeah. it better for you. We <laughs> give you a moral foundation. But here you are. You don't want to take out the garbage. Cool. Just, just skip it. Fine. <laughs> I, I did that with my with my daughter this Thanksgiving. No, you didn't. I, well, kind of. I'm like, it was very light, though. She's like, I want custard pie. I'm like, cool. Eat your green beans. She's like, I don't want to eat the green beans. All right, we don't have to. Just no custard pie, that's all. So she goes, no, 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 I want, I want custard pie. I'm like, then eat the green beans. If you eat the green beans, you get custard pie. Yeah. She's like, no, no, no. It was an argument. I'm like, no, no, it's just an, a choice. I'm not forcing you to eat it, but you also don't get the pie. <laughs> <laughs> it's your choice in the end. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, same with uh, this other Twitter person wrote at MS... Miss H. Bamford says, sometimes I feel like I'm parenting my parents. Ooh. You know, that's going to happen. They're going to get older. Yeah. Right? And as Gen Xers, I am not a spring chicken. I'm middle-aged. Mm-hmm. Eventually, I'm going to have to take care of my parents. That's a scary thought. Yeah, it is. Like, this is, this is not, not something that I'm looking forward to, but it's something that I'm required to do. Mm-hmm. Like, we have to be good children. Do we? 
Eh, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> eh, I guess. Do you know in Korea, uh, a lot of, in the older Korean style, mm-hmm. they, the children stayed home to take care of the parents and grandparents. That was just a thing that they did. But I think since the 80s and 90s, uh, Korean children that got an education actually got good jobs and they left the family. Like there's no coming back mm. to take care of the family. They, they're just out and gone. And I think that is kind of a thing that we are doing globally. We're saying like, well, cool parents. Anyway, I have an education now. <laughs> Thank you for giving it to me. Thank you for rearing me. Thank you for paying for college. Thank you for pushing me to get a good job. Now that I have a good job, I make a lot of money. I'm really enjoying this freedom. Yeah. And you're like, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Pull back a little bit, but <laughs> Come on back and, and, you know, wipe my butt when I'm old. Yeah. My dad said that to me. He goes, you're going to wipe my ass when I'm old. What a thing to say. Well, you know what? My mom was different because she had to take care of her, her father, my grandfather, obviously. Mm-hmm. And um, that whole experience made her come up to me one day and she was like, just put me in a home. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I was like, done. Elder care. <laughs> didn't even question yeah. and I was like all right cool so this is for at, at Miss H Bram- Bamford yeah. just take your parents to a nursing home and then then say bye bye <laughs> do it the Tina Hunt way yeah that's, that's the Tina Hunt method that's of it. raising your parents a firm a firm handshake <laughs> <laughs> a lunch bag see you later have fun <laughs> it's like well mom and dad here you are at the nursing home let's, let's shake hands here we go all right <laughs> Yeah, that's nice. Thank you for rearing me. Thank you for everything. And um, this is where we part ways. And see. And <laughs> so you're all you're all done here. You're all done here. Uh-oh. All right. Uh, this is from who is this from? At how do you pronounce that? At concordance, but, but it has zeros. In there's it. zeros for the O's. Okay. Oh, at funny. concordance. At concordance from Twitter says, in my day, you bought three hundred dollar college textbooks and then sold them back, in air quotes, to the college bookstore for $10. Now, there are online book rental options where you pay $300 for a textbook rental and get $290 back when you return it or buy a virtual textbook for $20. Bucks. What? I didn't even know that. Yeah, this, okay, so when, I, when we went to college, it yeah. was like you bought your textbooks and then you buy them. You could even buy them used, though. Yeah. You don't have to pay full price like a moron. Yeah. You bought them used, and then, you know, you sold them back to the bookstore when you're done. Mm-hmm. I actually, if you look at my bookshelf behind you, look, I actually have, sorry, in my, in my studio, I have my bookshelf here. I have some of the textbooks that I've kept because I really enjoy the, con- the content in those textbooks. Yeah. Right? And so I don't really sell those books back, but that's kind of part of the college thing. Yeah, textbooks. Um, you have to buy them. It's required reading. Yeah. Or borrow friends, I guess. Yeah, but this virtual thing, and I... I- would have really loved that if I was when I was going to college. Yeah, there's companies like Chegg and O'Reilly and other places that have these virtual textbooks. Mm-hmm. But I, I got to be honest, I cannot handle reading a textbook online. Why? I want you're a feel, tech guy. I yeah yeah no I am a tech guy, <laughs> but I want to feel the book. I want to feel the book. I want to feel the paper. I want to yeah. be able to turn those pages and look at it. Mm-hmm. Like there has to be a market for it because bookstores still exist. True. Yeah. People still love touching textbooks. People still love putting their hands on, on paper and be like, look, this is, I, I want to feel it. Mm-hmm. Right? Textbooks don't have to worry about power or battery or screens. I don't have to worry about dropping something. And if I want to highlight it, I highlight. Like, are you a highlighter? I am. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I do two things. Highlight and then I have to write it down. Do you write in the margins? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, me too. So I write in the margins of the book if I find a really good concept and then erase, and then erase it before I sell it back. <laughs> because the textbook people are all the same, right? They'll flip through all the pages and look for marks. Yeah. No, I just write, write lightly in the margins. But I, but I do it and I highlight lightly. And, you know, oh, do you know there's a erasable highlighter now? What? There's a erasable highlighter. That's just witchery. That is yeah. like witchcraft. There's erasable <laughs> highlighter. I can't believe, yeah, there's a erasable highlighter. But even more so, if I know I'm keeping the book, I don't use a highlighter. Do you know what I use? What? A crayon. Why do you use a crayon? Because a crayon doesn't leak through the page. <gasps> oh. Pro tip. Pro tip listeners that are going to school, right? I've never thought of that. I use a crayon. It's waxy. And therefore, it's a slightly water repellent. Yeah. 
I highlight with a with a yellow crayon because then I still get the highlighting on, yeah. but it doesn't leak to the paper. It's waxy, so it re- resists a lot of like smudging. Yeah. And it's it's awesome. So no smearing. No smearing. Thanks. Why don't people use crayons? I don't know. Mm. But part of that whole experience of of having a textbook is holding the textbook. I understand digital textbooks. Like I had a friend, Aaron, who was studying. I think I might have told this story already. Mm-hmm. I had a friend, Aaron, and we were at UH together. And he was studying to be a pharmacist. And he had two backpacks. And it, it's a true story. Mm-hmm. He had one backpack on the front and one backpack on, his, on, the, on the back. And I go, why do you always carry two backpacks? He goes, well, the one on the back is just for general studies. The one on the front is just all my textbooks for organic chemistry. That's insane. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, he had a backpack full of books in the front just for organic chemistry. For one class. For one class. And I kind of wondered, like, what if what if he had online textbooks back in the day? Oh, yeah. He would just would, have, need a tablet. Yeah, would that have been better? Yeah. But, you know, going back to maybe he likes to, like, flip through pages and then cross-reference research. Mm. Like, I cannot do that on a tablet, really, effectively. I want to put maybe two books down side by side and cross-reference information. Mm-hmm. I have done that on, on rare occasion. Yeah. yeah. It, it happens. So, I mean, but the point of this person's tweet is like $300 for textbooks. Yeah, textbooks are expensive. Yeah, they are. They're such a fucking ripoff. Yeah. I had a, a professor once who actually, uh, what he did was he um, went to a print shop yeah. and wrote all of his like lessons. And that was basically your book. And it was so much cheaper and getting mm. these college textbooks. Yeah. I wish more professors would do stuff like that or think about that. I had a professor named Dr. Kim, Dr. Min Sun Kim. Mm-hmm. We, you know what our reading was? What? Her book. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you scammer. <laughs> I, I, I still have her book, by the way, on my shelf. Actually, not bad. But like, wait a minute. The textbook for this class is your book? <laughs> so I have to buy your book and pay for this class. Like, what the? F- oh, yeah. my God. Like I had to, we had to buy her book. Yeah, and it wasn't a bad book, but I'm like, I have to pay seventy dollars for a for a, a book like half an inch thick, and listen to you talk about you, <laughs> and then listen to you talk about your book that you wrote all the while reading your book, and then doing work yeah. out of the book. Yeah, like that is that's some sneaky shit. Yeah, dude, I'm gonna do that. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna make a textbook for my classroom. <laughs> <laughs> the Truth by Howard Cam. <laughs> How to write books. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> buy my book. But you know and why textbooks are so expensive? It's mm. because you have a, limp, you have a, you have a captive audience, yeah. right? So the, you, you buy these textbooks, you're a captive audience, you have to buy it. And, and you go, oh God, you know what makes me mad? What? When there's a revision to the book mm. and you have to buy the next version. Like edition five. Oh like, yeah. What's in edition five different from edition four? I'm like we changed the word the to they. Yeah. There's some new pictures. I'm like, oh come on with that. And that's another three hundred bucks right there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's how they get you. Like, and I never okay, I don't understand why there have to be different versions of an algebra book. Yeah. It's fucking algebra. <laughs> like, did the concept of algebra change? Like, are we not? Are we solving it differently? Yeah. No. If it's the same way we're solving these problems, these mathematical problems, then why do we have to buy new books? Yeah. I don't. Yeah. I don't care about the pictures. Yeah. Just they, give me the the same fucking formula every time. Right. Show me the picture of Johnny from the 1980s putting like apples in his cart. Exactly. I don't. <laughs> I don't. Don't don't sugarcoat it. Don't put like now we have like a diverse you know United Colors of Benetton yeah. Rainbow Coalition. <laughs> Of people on the cover. I don't care about that. That's not, I'm not into, I, I don't, don't care about all that. Yeah. Teach me the concept, right? I think the only books that should change are like sociology books, medical textbooks, history books. Yeah. But then why don't we just use the internet to put all that content together? And streamline it? And streamline it. Yeah. And for example, if people are still paying three hundred dollars or two hundred ninety dollars or three, whatever for a, for a textbook rental, yeah, that is dumb as shit mm-hmm. because then it takes you seconds to update your internet website or internet presence, yeah. and then have that new content. That's wild. Yeah, I don't want to pay for that. Yeah, we don't need more subscription services. <laughs> <laughs> Refer back to the last episode. <laughs> right, right. What is this? Textbooks Plus. <laughs> 
Science Books Plus. <laughs> Did you subscribe to it? No, you have to subscribe. To you got to subscribe. Yeah, subscribe. <laughs> that is, I, I hate that. I hate that we have to do that. Yeah. Right. Paying paying big money for textbooks. Yeah. Anything else on textbooks? No, I I think we covered that. Oh, so there was a there was a Reddit post a while ago, long time ago, where a person said, or their teacher said, I'm, textbooks are expensive and I'm not sure how you could get them, but I'm sure that if you thought about, there was a torrent, a, a, a lot of ways, like a torrent of ways to do things. <laughs> <laughs> and there are so many like libraries from A through Z <laughs> Yeah, if you're if you're a millennial, and you know, you or a Gen Z, or you know what I'm talking about right now. And he's like telling his kids how to pirate books, yeah, without telling them where to go, but they'll figure it out. Yeah. Oh, by the way, that website, well, it's kind of down now. A Z library, yeah, that got seized by the FBI. What? So as of this recording, what is this? November twenty? What what day are we? November twenty. 20- Fifth? Yeah. Yeah. November 25th, 2022. If you go to that website, yeah. there is a big old picture that says seized by the Department of Justice or whatever, the FBI. Oh, that, what? That sucks. And, and I'm not saying I went there recently. I'm just <laughs> saying that I saw an article about it. Because <laughs> I, I follow the rules. I follow the law. <laughs> yeah. There is a big old, like, uh, see, this domain has been seized by the FBI. Wow. Yeah. That's wild. Yeah. Yeah. That, that is, that is something. But anyway, anyway, let's look at the next, let's look, you want to read the next one? Yeah. Oh, uh, this is, this is up your alley because, you know, you like pets. Ah. Or you like. The Cat Whisperer. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Uh, I'm a Gen Xer, so I adapt to new technology like a millennial, but get angry about it like a boomer. That is, <laughs> yeah, that is our generation. Like yeah. we, like, I think we talked about this before, like we we, when I say we, we mean Gen Xers, like we rolled into technology, mm-hmm. but we have enough angst and anger <laughs> from being sarcastic as a generation <laughs> to say, why doesn't this fucking work properly? Yeah. Yeah. Like when, I remember when cell phones first came out mm-hmm. and there was like a billion different kinds of cell phones. Like right now, if you think about it, what do you have? Samsung. Apple. Apple. The, the two big names. And then there's like a Google Pixels and, and whatever. But back in the day, there was like the Nokias, the the Motorola Razors, and all oh, these cell phones. Yeah. You remember those? Yeah, everybody went crazy for those. Yeah, we you can buy any like flip out phones, slider phones, miniaturized pocket phones, bar style phones. Yeah. And when you went to like the cell phone accessory shop, they had so much selection. Mm-hmm. There was like, I want a case for this phone. Like, what kind of phone is it? Well, then it's over here, and it was like a big old store. Like, imagine like almost like a like a giant Radio Shack. Yeah. God, do I have to explain Radio Shack? I hope to God not, because that's going to make me feel old as fuck. <laughs> I love. We'll talk about Radio Shack later. We'll talk about Radio Shack, uh, listeners. If you don't know what Radio Shack is, just go to Google, type in Radio Shack, and then get ready to be sad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or happy. I, I don't know. Maybe you don't need it anymore. It was like it was like Best Buy's daddy. Yeah. <laughs> it's a great way to say that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Radio Shack was Best Buy's dad. Oh. Anyway, so. We went to the, the cell phone accessory store and there's all kinds of accessories. And we'd always be like, oh, what do you have? A Motorola Razor? What do you have? I got a Samsung, f- a slider phone. Mm-hmm. And then do you remember the, the, God, what was that thing? that The Sidekick. Oh, the Sidekick, yeah. Holy shit, the Sidekick. So the Sidekick is like a bar style phone. Mm-hmm. And what you would do is you take your thumb and you flip, push one side and the screen would flip 180 degrees, exposing a keyboard underneath. Yeah. Oh, that was so awesome. Yeah. It was like your own fidget toy. It was really yeah. good. And people used to just flick that screen all the time. Yeah. <laughs> click, 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 click. They would do that. And you could just type, you know, there wasn't touch screens back in the day. Mm-hmm. So you would type with your thumbs. Yeah. Right? And it's like, it was the best. And then, you know, then we got really mad when it stopped working because, okay, listeners, you have to imagine like in the, in the, in the dawn of cell phones and like the golden age of cell phones when there's like 30, 40, 50 different kinds of cell phones, mm. 60% of those were shit. Yeah. They were shit. They had terrible screens. They had terrible keys. They didn't do what it's supposed to do. Volume was terrible. And there was no internet really back in the day to explain to you like which cell phones are good. Like you couldn't just go on the internet and goes, best cell phones under $300. You couldn't do that. Yeah. You just had to like take the word of mouth of others. Right. 
and we got some shit purchases. So yeah, we got angry about it like a boomer when it doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> right? This fucking piece of shit, why doesn't it work? I can't get my phone to work. But I love it because the batteries used to last like 30 days. Yeah. <laughs> batteries used to last a whole month before you had to charge it. I That's would, true. I would lose my charger before I had to charge my phone. Yeah. And then the, but the problem with that was because there's so many different kinds of phones. You're like, hey, does anybody have a, a charger? Like, what do you got? I have a, a Nokia. What version? 3310. Like, yeah, I don't got it. I got a Motorola Razor, bro. Sorry. You're out. You're totally out. <laughs> yeah. Different chargers. Different chargers for different phones. Like, it was, it was nuts. Yeah. It was nuts. But yeah, I, I do. Do you get mad at your tech? Well, you know, I think the only thing I get mad at is um, like the new type of social media apps like Snapchat. Mm. Cannot understand it. Don't I, understand. Like, why? Why would you want a two second message and then it's gone? Yeah, I don't, I don't understand TikTok. Okay. Actually, I, I was like that. And then COVID hit. And now I'm all about TikTok. What is, what is, so it's basically just like short videos, right? Short videos, correct. And then Instagram's doing the same thing with their reels. Yeah, yeah. They're trying to copy that. And then YouTube has YouTube shorts. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I didn't really understand it. I mean, I understand, I get it, but mm -hmm. I was like, eh. All right. R Abbott 648 says, is listening to AM radio something that happens to everyone in middle age? Asking for a friend. Uh, no. Yeah. No, R Abbott 648. AM radio is for people that listen to right wing politics in the fringes of society. Yeah. Uh, I don't listen to AM radio. I, God. I don't even uh, know if I listen to FM radio. Uh, when's the last time I've listened to the radio? <laughs> I, Why do you want commercials? <laughs> I've got podcasts. Yeah, no, really. I've got podcasts. I've got my, my, my music. Right. I don't need the radio. Yeah. And especially AM radio. Yeah. I've known two people that listen to AM radio. One are my grandparents, <laughs> right? Uh, and one was a friend who believed in conspiracies, and he's still always listening to a right-wing loudmouth talk radio on AM. Oh. Yeah, we don't, I don't talk to him a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's what, he, that's what he listens to. Yeah, it's a wild, it's like the Wild West there. It is. And the people that, I guess... I mean, those AM radio stations still must exist because they're still around. Somebody must sponsor them. Somebody has to pay these people. Yeah. Well, all the boomers are, you know, they're still alive. Still, yeah, so. the boomers are still like, I'm going <laughs> to give 5% of my paycheck to AM radio. <laughs> AM radio, the best radio. <laughs> no, I don't even listen to I don't even listen to FM radio now. Yeah. Because one, I don't want to listen to commercials. Mm -hmm. That's why I have my music. Mm -hmm. I don't want to listen to that. I don't want to, and it's usually these, these DJs on the radio, they, they try to be like really shocking, mm -hmm. especially in the morning, just to get your attention. Yeah. Like there's a, what is it called? Like second date update or something. Locally here that we have that. It's like a, where a thing they, some people go on dates and they talk about their date on the air. But yeah. all that is fake. Yeah. It's not real. Yeah. None of it's real. It's all made up. Yeah. But people... Like, it's like the Jerry about. Springer show. That could, yeah. 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 By the way, do our listeners know who Jerry Springer is? Oh, stop. No. <laughs> <laughs> you keep trying to make me feel old. No, no, man. I mean, <laughs> hey, so like we are getting older, right? Yeah. Okay. Listeners, if you don't know who Jerry Springer is, uh, he's an uh, older talk show shock jock. He, you know, he used to be the mayor of Cleveland, I think. What? Yeah. That's insane. Yeah. But he's, he's a talk show host that likes to instigate fights. Yeah. Between his guests. And then the crowd would chant, Jerry, Jerry, Jerry. <laughs> I remember that. As people are throwing chairs, yeah. and the security guards are like, wait a second, and then come in and break it up yeah. because it's good for TV. <laughs> but no, those, those are all paid actors. Yeah. None of those people can be real. Yeah. Because that is like the most degenerate bottom of the barrel society people. Oh, uh, you have my, that, that's my daughter. Well, that's my cousin and that's my wife. Like, oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh God, I don't, I don't, that, that kind of drives me nuts. Yeah. All right. You want to read this last one out? All right. At Media Fighter, is that what? Yeah. P-H-Y-T-E-R. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
where the hell was Shazam when I spent my childhood sitting on the floor with a dual cassette deck waiting for a song to come on the radio so I could record it and listen to it 800 times to figure out the lyrics and who it was. Oh my God, this hit home. <laughs> I absolutely. And remember um, CDs, um, mm-hmm. younger generation, if you don't know what that is, that's oh God. No, you, you do know what that is. Yeah. But in the back of the CD, there'd be like that paper. Yeah. And then yeah. You, I would memorize the lyrics yeah. on the back paper. Oh the liner God. notes, right? Yes. Right. You needed those. Like that was like, and I love buying those CDs and even like cassettes or even, God, even albums. Yeah. I would look at the cover art. I would look at the liner notes. Yeah. And I hated it when they didn't put their freaking lyrics on the liner yeah. notes. Yeah. I'm like, dude, <laughs> what is the lyrics? And so, yeah, Shazam wasn't around. Shazam is a thing where people put it to the, to the radio and they can get the lyrics for the song or identify the song. Yeah. But that's how we listened to what the lyrics was. Like, like Blinded by the Light or like uh, a Tiny Dancer. Everything says, hold me closer, Tony Danza. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tony Danza. Hold me closer, closer Tony, Tony Danza. Danza. <laughs> But yeah, we had to listen to these songs and kind of figure out what they were. Or worse yeah. yet is, I, I don't know if you ever did this. I, we used to like sit by the radio, cassette deck blank mm-hmm. in the cassette recorder with our finger over the record. And we would wait for the song that we wanted to come on so we could hit record. Yes. And have our, yeah. And have our own mix. And then I always hated it when the fucking DJ would talk through the intro of the song. Yes. Yes. And it's like, no, stop, stop. Stop talking. <laughs> stop talking. <laughs> Like that sick guitar riff hits you like here it comes and then the DJ's like, Thank you for listening to like, oh shut the hell up. Yeah, you just ruined the whole you thing. You ruined it and I gotta wait another couple hours. Yeah. But that's what we used to do. We used to sit and wait for the song to come on. Mm-hmm. I used to always like call into the radio station. Yeah. And say, Can you play this? And they're like, We just did. I'm like, Okay, well, when? <laughs> uh we played it this morning. Oh, we'll play it again later. Okay, thanks for calling. I'm like, fuck. Yeah. Like, what do I have to do? I mean, that's why I, I like streaming services because I don't have to wait for nobody. Yeah. If I want to fucking hear um, DMX, I'm going to fucking hear DMX right now. Damn right. Yeah. Damn right. <laughs> right now. Right now. Yeah. Like we had to sit there back in the day and then hold our finger over the record and do that. What we did you ever dub tapes from your friends? Or dub C or, du- or uh, I did the CDs, but duplicate not the tapes. CDs. Yeah, I yeah. used to do that. Yeah, we used to always like um, dub over or like I used to get tapes from friends like they would buy it or their parents would buy it for them. Yeah. And then immediately run to that friend's house like, all right, all right, all right, let's go. Get your double, get your tape decks out. <laughs> and then hit record play or play record and like, yeah, now I have a copy of the tape. <laughs> but then it would get worse over time because then you would get a copy of a copy of a copy of a copy. Yeah. And it's like, oh, that sounds like shit. <laughs> yeah. Actually, it was kind of creepy after a while. I was like, Ooh. Yeah. It's like oh, there's no bass in this. And then, or no trouble, like all flat. Yeah. Or we used to like, um, and then when, I remember when CD uh, recorders first came out, mm-hmm. like we had a friend who had a CD recorder in his computer. So we used to be able to copy CDs like one to another. Like this is magic. Yeah. I've never seen a computer with two CD players inside of it. Yeah. And do you remember like it would be loading, like the, the little taskbar would be like filling up, like we're almost there to all of the songs. Yeah. Yeah. And you just had to wait in anticipation. Yeah. Whereas now it's just like one click. <laughs> yeah. Or somebody would come by and bump the machine as a CD. <gasps> oh, like, God damn it. Yes. Because those things were not cheap when they first came out. Those no. were like a couple of bucks a piece. Yeah. And I'm they were like, clunky. Yeah. I mean, bust out the inflation calculator, but those, those blank CDs were money. Mm-hmm. Right. And then, and you take your Sharpie marker because if you use the ballpoint, you would smash the CD. Yeah. You take your Sharpie marker out like, uh, I don't know, Sweet Jams number one. <laughs> <laughs> or if you had like a crush, you're like, how I feel about you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. The mixtape. Did you ever make a mixtape for someone? I have. How yeah. did it go? Um, You know, he was a toxic ex-boyfriend, so okay. Well, <laughs> it went as well as it could have been. <laughs> yeah, I, I did. I ever make a mixtape? I don't even remember. Yeah, I don't. I, I probably did because I, you know, at once, believe it or not, I was a teenager and stupid. I, I'm very surprised by that. I, I thought you were I born did. an annoyed adult. I was probably. I came out this way. <laughs> 
Where? What's up with the temperature in this room? <laughs> no, I'm I'm pretty sure I I made a mixtape here and there. I had to. Yeah. Like I'm pretty sure our listeners have to. They just want to admit it, or maybe they just yeah. It's just admitting that you did. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, am I missing anything? Anything else? No, I think that's it, dude. All right. Well, that's about all the time we have for today. As always, Tina, I want to thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for being here. And thank you, listener, for listening. And if you have a question or comment that you'd like to be addressed on the show, you can email us at theannoyedadult at gmail.com or send us a message on Twitter at theannoyedadult, hoping Elon Musk doesn't destroy it. Yeah. It's on the verge of just no. falling apart. Maybe maybe they should just email us. Yeah. yeah okay. <laughs> <laughs> and if you haven't already a subscription to the show would be delightful and if you have thank you we'll meet you again in the next episode Bye. Hello. hi there if you're really enjoying the show would you mind rating it five stars it would really help me out and i'd really appreciate it all right here comes the show